Thank you, Marissa, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm Pratap Dendi, CEO at GEM. I'm super excited to be here today. I'm even more excited about our keynote speaker today. I know I can speak for all of us here at GEM Summit that we are so, so thrilled to have Reed Hoffman with us. In our community, uh, that is the talent acquisition community, we thrive on LinkedIn and the entire ecosystem around LinkedIn so very much. So just a little bit more about Reed. Uh, he's an accomplished entrepreneur, executive, and investor. Reed has played an integral role in building many of today's leading consumer technology businesses. In 2003, he co-founded LinkedIn, the world's largest professional networking service. He joined Greylock Venture Capital Firm in 2009. Reed currently serves on the boards of a range of organizations from Microsoft, Airbnb, to some early stage and stealth startups and a lot of nonprofit boards such as Kiva, the, Stand the Stanford Institute of um, Human-Centered AI, the MacArthur Foundation's 100 and Change. He is the host of my favorite uh, podcast, Masters of Scale, an original podcast series and the very first American media program to commit to a 50-50 gender balance for featured guests. He is the co-author of three best-selling books, the Startup of You, The Alliance, which is a crowd favorite here in the talent community, and Blitzscaling. He is an Aspen Institute Crown Fellow, a Marshall Scholar at Oxford, and a graduate of Stanford University. Reed Hoffman, welcome to GEM Summit. We are so thrilled to have you. This is, just so you know, this is the inaugural year uh, for GEM uh, with our user conference where we're joined uh, by over 3,000 talent leaders ranging from chief, chief people officers, diversity officers, sourcers, entrepreneurs, founders uh, from companies ranging from early stage to public companies from some of the world's most innovative brands. Our audience surely will benefit from your thinking, your insights, from your experience as founder, leader, and investor, and will surely walk away inspired about their own charter, which is simply to help build great teams. So welcome, Reed. It's a great honor to be here. Um, I would say lower expectations a little bit, just uh, you know, like, oh my gosh. And uh, thank you for the long intro. As you know, um, I'm a huge fan and supporter of GEM. Uh, Greylock is, is a delighted investor and a partner uh, because we think the, the, the GEM product and services are the best in the world, uh, truly amazing. Um, and so when you know you asked me if I could show up, you know even in this weird pandemic time, the answer is of course yes, because the the things that Gem is doing are so amazing. What little bits and pieces I can do to facilitate and help on the journey, I'm delighted and honored. Thank you. So just to uh, get us going, we've asked our audience to uh, give us a couple of questions, uh, and here is an opening one. This is this is a crowd favorite. Um, this is about the year 2020. Uh, you know, clearly the, the year has uh, threw, thrown us off for a loop. Um, I wanted to ask, um, what were some things that you had originally planned for, for the grand year 2020 that totally got off track? Uh, and what are some new things that you did this year that you weren't planning, but have been such a pleasant surprise to you? Well, first, um, one of my new favorite expressions is, what the 2020? Um, because, of course, you know, like how uh, insane and crazy a year has this been? If someone had predicted the way that this would play out, you you just simply wouldn't 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 believe it. Um, and also, of course, you know, one of the things is for a lot of people, this has been a horrific year. Um, it's you know the whether it's loss of a job, loss of a loved one, just uncertainty about what's going on. And so, you know, uh, it really feels very. Um, you know, kind of my heart goes out for the for the incredible amount of suffering that's going on in the world. And, you know, all of us are trying to help as we can. And so I, I, I think that's a good way to be, kind of begin on the 2020. Now, you know, personally, um, 2020 was set to be in some ways a year like most of my years, which is I go to conferences and I spend time with CEOs and boards and entrepreneurs. And, you know, you try to craft what's happening. And we did know that this year would be a political year. And the question would be is, you know, kind of, are we going to try to make the right kinds of changes and differences uh, for who we are as Americans and the society and how we play in the world uh, for this? And so, um, 
And so, you know, those kinds of things I think were, um, were I knew was going to be really important. But what obviously I didn't expect was all of that would go away. Um, that the that we'd all be, you know, we those of us who are lucky and privileged enough to be able to say, look, I can work by sheltering in place. I can basically live in my house and 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 create a little bio bubble, you know. So I did that. And you know, the 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 challenges are now, you know, the whole world is 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 through these small screens. Um, I started kidding around with some of my friends who think that we're living in a simulation. It's like, okay, now I, 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 I now agree with you. I wasn't agreeing with you before, but it now really does feel like that. Um, or, um, you know, obviously some of the delights are, you know, I have dinner uh, with my better half every night. Um, I actually have a deeper degree of international connectivity than I used to because I used to really optimize for being in person and some international trips. But like now... There's friends of mine who who are in Europe and in Asia that I that I talk to every week uh, because that's just part of the, the the video conference circuit. So all of that has been a surprise uh, and delight. Where the other things have been surprise and adjustment. And you know, obviously, um, as I started at the beginning, you know, my life has been uh, like I'm I'm so lucky and and privileged to be in an industry and a job where I can do all this. Whereas other folks, uh, it's been much much harder and and. You know, I, I've been doing what I can um, for the whole range of society in that case. Thank you uh, for sharing that. Um, so the next one is about uh, what's core to our community here, which is growth of our, our, our teams. And, and you and your co-authors defined uh, in blitz scaling uh, and, and the, 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 the traditional definition as the pursuit of rapid growth by prioritizing speed over efficiency in an environment of uncertainty. Uh, I think just like, as you said, uh, 2020 has its own uh, share of uncertainty due to COVID uh, pandemic and the social unrest. Uh, and um, on, on your show, um, um, I recently heard uh, Microsoft uh, uh, CEO say, we experienced two years of uh, digital transformation in just a very quick window of about two months since COVID. So we often wonder, um, you know, I'd love to hear from you from your vantage point, what are some, some of those macro trends and opportunities from a kind of attracting talent and, and building teams at uh, blitz scaling speed as um, talent acquisition leaders, how should we think about it? Uh, how should we look for those kind of transformative innovation movements uh, to accelerate um, and, and benefit from that disruption? So, um... Look, and it's exactly the right kind of question, which is, oh, sorry about the light. <laughs> we have the sun that's not really conspiring with us. Um, exactly the right kind of question, which is when you're confronted with a crisis, how do you look at it as opportunity? What are the kinds of things you do and adjust? And part of the, the lesson in blitzscaling is it isn't just move fast for moving fast sake, it's move faster than your competition. Because frequently the first to scale is the person who sets the rules, who 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 is the is the company, the product, the service, the institution that is the transformation that essentially uh, you know then becomes a new industry, it sets the new norms as new platform. All of this stuff is the things that are very important. And as part of fast growing companies, as part of that is you have to think about you know the reason why in blitz scaling we define your sizes based on size of the company is because that's actually the proxy to what happens within your actually, in fact, you know, your, your, your ability to serve new products, to, to get to global scale, to do a whole bunch of things. And so, so it, it's the right question, which is where is the opportunity in this crisis? Um, and you know, the short answer is you need to start thinking about this. You, you can't say, well, we just take the old stuff and update it a little bit. Like in the early days of the internet, we say, oh, we'll take classifieds and we'll just put them online and now they'll be searchable. It's like, no, no, no. Now we can do things, things that Gem allows, things that LinkedIn allows, which is like actually go and find the talent that is the right talent for the kind of, the right match, the, the, the talent who is the right skills, the right mission, the right motivation, the right excitement. And then as opposed to them sorting through a needle in a haystack of an online classified system, you can go find them. And that this is actually, in fact, you know, already the transformation we're doing. But now the question becomes, how do you do that in this new COVID environment. Because, you know, the previous thing is you kind of get them on the phone and then you bring them in and then you have a bunch of people talk to them and you do reference checking, all of which is still kind of part of this, but you can't really fully bring them in. And the question is, how do you establish with them? How do you bring, how do you share the mission and trust in what you're doing? And so you now need to be thinking about like, well, what are the things that make this a kind of a online 
like because it's now like online first, mobile first kind of environment. So like things that I've seen uh, great talent teams doing is you know recording a little bit of of kind of like video about like what their company is and what their team is and mailing it to people or you know otherwise you know like you know uh, you know sending the links through LinkedIn email or through any of these kind of channels to say hey here's a little bit of who we are and so forth and the kinds of things we're doing and the kind of exciting company that we're running during covid because we're being we're we're, we're being COVID intelligent, uh, both in terms of how we operate, in terms of how we try to serve in the world and community. Um, I've seen uh, folks doing uh, much more, like, you know, for example, uh, even things where you say, well, part of this is just to actually, hey, let's just have a chat and and build some social trust, talking about the world and that kind of stuff. Because, you know, taking the the the, the, the fact that most people are isolated at home, at home in order to, um, uh, you know, kind of in order to to try to, to use that as a basis for new patterns of establishing connectivity, of showing what's special about your company, what's what's about why to engage in that conversation with you. And then if they were join you, how would it work? Because, you know, you know, weirdly, of course, while we have this increased massive global connectivity, we also, of course, have much more loneliness, much more like, well, wait a minute, I don't go out to dinner as much. And and my whole world is sitting in front of this, you know, small screen on this laptop. Um, and, um, you know, and like right now, kind of trying to make sure that my my, my face is in the light <laughs> versus in the darkness uh, because of the way the sun is coming in and out. I'm, a, I'm up here in Seattle. Um, and so, uh, you know, that kind of, of, of pattern um, is now endemic. And so what you do as a, as a blitz scaling company or as a differential company is that you, um, uh, you essentially... Uh, define new rules, you experiment with new things. And what you should experiment with is not just the things that are most helpful in the next three months. That's very useful, good to do. But which of the things that when experimenting and doing them now adds to your repertoire for the next five years, the next 10 years, right? So you go, like, for example, when I was using the example of sending out, you know, video introductions, it was like, well, before you didn't really need to do that because you could move so quickly to in person, whereas now we're in these disconnected environments. And so something that's personal, not necessarily that's necessarily hugely produced and something that, you know, has some kind of interesting reason to do it. Um, you know, you could you can innovate in various ways within the video and that kind of thing. And those kinds of things are important as now as icebreakers. But of course, as all the talent, you know, the the, the talent uh, teams know, you know, it's not just the, well, get them, you know, respond and engage, share information, <laughs> right? Getting like, is there a serious? Is it worth engaging this process together? Then engaging within the company, then onboarding to the company, then making sure you're really happy with the company. All of these things, you need to look at all of them and 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 tune in. And so, one thing I'll I'll, I'll share with the Gem audience, since you guys are so awesome, um, that uh, is coming is like that that process of product in, uh, invention um, is actually one of the things that uh, Virgin does. Because I have interviewed Richard Branson. We're going to have a future upcoming Richard Branson Masters of Scale episode. And some of that, of that, of that tuning of looking at each detail and getting it uh, and getting it magical is part of the product uh, process there. And so, you know, that should be thought of in the recruiting process, in the onboarding process, in the in the in the in the new team cohesion process. Uh, and those are all things that uh, you should innovate for what's special about your company, about your team. Thank you, Reed. That's that's a lot there. I appreciate that. And by the way, by the, way, the sunlight there looks great. Uh, so one point uh, you touched on, which is which is very personal to to a lot of us. Uh, last six months working from home, uh, and, and you you touched a little bit around how people are feeling. You know whether it is you know, loneliness or or just this need to uh, stay connected, uh, need to go back. Um, one thing that that um, I've been thinking about is uh, in your book, uh, The Alliance, you had predicted you know, this kind of changing nature of the employer and employee relationships uh, as we get into this hyper networked age. I mean, you wrote this a few years ago um, and the book clearly had outlined the need for the right language and framework for building these high trust relationships, uh, including instruments uh, such as uh, the tour of duty. Now, in the light of the pandemic and, and where we're all kind of uh, uh, digitally connected, but but remote, uh, you know, as you said, the first time ever, I feel in human history, majority of knowledge workers are all working remotely. 
and, and looking for you know uh, ways to kind of connect with each other. Now it feels like the the trust element that the book talks about, um, the the need for that uh, has only gotten deeper. Uh, and you know, as a manager, as a leader, um, as as a hiring person, um, I I could only learn more on how best to attract connect, retain this, this top talent around the world. Mm. Um, I, I was wondering if you have a few thoughts to share on uh, how uh, employees and employers could navigate this new mm. work environment better, uh, specifically around this kind of remote and, um, connectivity. Yes, for sure. I mean, I think part of the thing, part of the thing to realize is that these are all about trust relationships and, and part of the alliance was trying to address a piece of the trust relationship that was failing in almost every company because it was kind of this difficulty, like companies were not just adjusting difficulty to the new world. They were still kind of using the language of, hey, you're gonna work here forever, which could be a great outcome for uh, a talent and a company. Um, and so they use that as kind of the baseline. But the problem of course is when you look at the modern world, like. That doesn't work in the US, doesn't work in most countries, even changing in Japan. And so the problem is that conversation doesn't happen. Um, and so uh, so what happens, of course, is then that that's the elephant in the room. And if you're like, well, if we're not talking about the elephant in the room, what else are we not talking about, right? Because yeah. not only is the, the prospective employee might go on to another job, but so might the manager and so might the CEO, <laughs> right? And so, uh, and, so, and so how do you navigate that? And, and, and the essentially the advice, of the alliance kind of boiled down to two parts, which was have trust building conversations, like address the elephant in the room, you know, be the, hey, look, we we really expect you to do great things here. We're hopeful that you might be here your entire career. That's really awesome. You know, that'd be great for the company, great for you, but also, you know, things change. And so we should stay synced because it may be that a different job ultimately, but then how do you navigate that? Because what's, what's ultimately? And that was part of the tours of duty framework by which you said, okay, Let's have a tour of duty by which you transform the company. You accomplish something like heroic, amazing, you know, wonderful that really, really helps the company in terms of the way this works. And uh, you also, um, uh, we help you. We in that in that heroic like that 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 project that you accomplish is really good. Then that takes your career, your capabilities, your opportunity set to the next level. And so let's help on that together. And that's what the tour of duty framework is. Now, obviously that all still applies, even in the remote work and, and so forth, and those are good to do. But the thing that's important to remember is that part of how the, um, uh, part of how the trust works is trust isn't just, I love the mission, and I love the product, I love the service, I love the company. Trust is also, um, I love, like I have connectivity with the people that I'm working with. And um, part of, um, you know, like, for example, when, when people have done surveys of soldiers, right, the kind of ultimate stressful environment, you know, you, you, you possibly can die, you're running into your weapons fire, you know, other kinds of things. And ultimately, soldiers kind of fight for the person next to them, whoever, you know, she or he is. And so one of the things that's actually really important, both in recruiting, but also in talent management, is to make sure that you're, you're strengthening that. Now, companies that already have uh, you know, like the teams that just went away, they'll, they 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 can live for a while off the connections that already been made. But you need to onboard new people. You need to bring them into the in, into this kind of trust circle. Um, when what you're learning for the long term is to say, hey, we can have now much broader, more remote talent in different places, and that's a skill we're going to add in case there's talent that we need that actually, in fact, you know, is in you know Kansas City or is in you know Atlanta or is in you know some location that you may not actually, in fact, have an office. And so you do that in order to um, uh, uh, in order to uh, you know you build those capabilities, and now you have them. But you need to build that trust. You need to build that connectivity. Now, um, we don't have some of the tools that the distributed only companies have, you know, uh, the things like uh, Automatic and WordPress and, uh, and mm -hmm. others, because they, what they do is they have found in-person is important. So they, re they have each team convene once a quarter, once every six months, once a year in some location and have, and then only have social, really, they do, you know, brainstorming and ideation, but they don't try to, like the work when they're there is building connectivity. Well, the parallel that we need to have now is a company should be building their building connectivity rituals. You know, what are the things that you do? You know, is it is it is it a virtual happy hour? You know, is it 
you know, kind of, uh, and, and of course, because it's a little bit more awkward, doesn't happen as naturally as it does within a company. Hey, we go, we go to lunch together, we go to the cafeteria. You have to build some environments and make it easier. Now, part of what I think those environments are, are like, well, um, bring in like, you know, like take a lightweight lecture or course together and talk about it. Uh, play an online board game together. You know, do things that are, these are the kinds of things that create social social juice. Do some of that as you're doing it in order to build that thing. And that naturally ties within the alliance to what you're trying to do because um, then each are also building that trust connectivity. And obviously, you know, some, the work needs to be done. People mostly want to build these connectivity in doing work together and so forth, which is important. But but make sure that's there so it just doesn't feel like everyone's just kind of staring at this small screen, you know, eight plus hours a day um, and not feeling some of the joy of the people they share the mission of your work with, the mission of your company with. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's super helpful. And, and you know, we, we do that again. And we've, seen, we've seen that different. Um, we connect outside of the usual conference calls, doing some joint activity together, build some physical things together. Uh, thank you for sharing those two constructs here. I think super timely. Um, the, the next one is just really core to um, our work here as, as talent acquisition um, uh, uh, focus, which is where is talent acquisition in general going? Um, um, you know, when LinkedIn started uh, by bringing every knowledge worker online into this global network, uh, that really powered a big shift in how people uh, go about finding their next play, next next uh, innings, uh, but also how talent acquisition teams can look for uh, top talent. What we have noticed is uh, the the teams have started to rely less and less on kind of in traditional inbound applications and job postings, uh, and spending more time, as, as you mentioned, around nurturing those uh, proactive relationships and thinking about what's the skill, what's what's the needed skill graph or the top talent pool no matter whether the candidates are actually actively looking uh, or not. Um, so uh, the, the question we have on our mind is um, what's behind a shift like that? Uh, why are companies, it started here in, in, in Silicon Valley, but uh, why are companies more and more adopting this new approach of looking at this passive talent anywhere uh, and, and nurturing that? Uh, and, and, where, and importantly, where do you see as a pioneer in this space, where do you see the future? of talent networking sort of going um, in the next uh, 10 years or so? So I think more and more, um, like it isn't that there isn't always a channel for, hey, we post a job, our website, classified services, people come in and we sort through some of that. And I think that's always there because sometimes you could be surprised. You could be surprised by, wow, that person's really amazing or really amazing for that job or something else. And so I think that knock on our front door will always be there if obviously with some challenges of there's so many knocks in the front door, <laughs> right? That frequently you're, 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 you have a, a bit of a, of a, of a, a CRM problem <laughs> on the, on the number of that. And so I think that will always exist, but I think more and more, it will be more towards the outbound recruiting. And, and the reason for the outbound recruiting is because, you know, unless you're going to spend, you know, five pages writing up everything about the job or, you know, just hoping that people are going to discover what the magic of your company is, the the mission, the product or service that you're building, the the reason that this could be the right kind of meaningful place for people to do their work. Because it isn't just about, you know, compensation, important, success, important, but also meaning. Like, what is it I'm doing? What is it I'm bringing to the world? What, you know, why is this the best use of me uh, in order for doing this? And that's almost always going to be, hey, we 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 we've we've looked at you, we found out a little bit about you, we read a blog post or a LinkedIn post or something, and we saw this and we wanted to talk to you about this. We see your LinkedIn profile, other kinds of things, and that you know, like what we have right now, you know, through excellent tools like Gem, you know, LinkedIn, other things, we have a way of doing search for that, but we we are just beginning to build up what is the data that a person would present about themselves which would allow that better fit. So for example, one of the problems we still have today is a little bit of kind of credentialism, which is everyone kind of looking only for the credentials where there's a lot of talent that could do that, which isn't necessarily purely within the credentials. So how do we help improve that? Well, as we make that electronically more discoverable, more searchable, uh, as we make search functions more powered by modern artificial intelligence and highly variant, 
you can then get to, oh, well, this person really is the right person. This is, and this is how to talk. This is how to knock on the door and share with them your initial vision to say, hey, this is why it's worth a little bit of time for us to have the conversation, for us to, to see if this is a good fit or not. And, 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 and by the way, the, the, the rewards are huge, right? It's kind of commonplace to know that your stars have 10x, 100x, 1,000x impact on your mission, whether your star is an individual employee or a manager or anything else, like that's super important. And so finding that talent and that talent edge, that's what makes it work. And even as an investor, you know, one of the most central things is if you don't think that the entrepreneurs uh, have that, uh, that the, the capabilities, the, the, the heart, the, 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 the brain, the skills, the, the grit, the determination, the flexibility, the learning to do it, then like, you know, like the, 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 then it just, it always failed. Could it even be like, Hey, I'm, I'm sitting on a, a great business area. I've got a great business idea, but it doesn't matter. And so the talent always really matters. And that gets you to, to going outbound most fundamentally. And, um, and it's only by the way, laziness and unfamiliar to the tools that there are the only impediments. And so the, what everyone needs to do is say, no, no, uh, to, for me to be a killer at my job, I'm going to be great at this outbound. I'm going to know the tools. I'm going to be inventive. I'm going to be, you know, thinking about things that other people haven't thought of. And that will be part of my differential edge. And those things are, in fact, what are super important about, um, about the, the future of talent recruiting, the future of talent management, the future of talent improvement. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I think like we're, we're only, you know, want to use a baseball metaphor. We're in the first inning here. Um, and there's like there's a lot of, of of innings to go, a lot of way to shift metaphors, a, a, a incredible journey ahead of us. Thank you. That that is so inspiring to hear about the vision you have um, for what what more can we do in uh, accelerating the talent uh, acquisition. On to our final question, Reed. Um, in a and this is just to kind of uh, put your investor uh, hat on. Um, in a recent interview, I think a couple of weeks ago uh, on uh, Bloomberg TV. Uh, you had said, and a paraphrase, uh, an asteroid uh, has just hit the economy, uh, COVID. Uh, the impact is, is varying across segments and verticals, but the innovators and entrepreneurs have already, already started uh, pivoting and, and building new businesses that are actually growing from the very asteroids, fumes, and minerals. Um, I loved uh, listening to that. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, um, with your investor hat on, what are some of the most exciting areas in tech uh, that you expect to see a dramatic pace of innovation, growth, and scale? Love to love to see if you can share some of those uh, with us. Delighted. Um, so look, so the first thing you already referred to it, uh, Sachin Adela, uh, in the first two months of the of CEO of Microsoft, in the first two months of of COVID, said we've seen two years of digital transformation in two months, and if anything, the continued you know, impact has led to, to increasing the speed of the digital transformation. So, uh, you know, there's a bunch of obvious areas where the obvious areas are things like, well, there's not going to be a lot more telemedicine. Now there's going to be a lot more teleeducation. Now there's going to be tons more collaborative uh, work tools uh, about how to, how to work for, for teams that are in, in, in partially or completely distributed. There's going to be a lot more uh, virtual events. There's going to be a lot more uh, meeting tools. So like all this stuff obviously is going through it. And then of course, a lot of things to enable uh, the physical infrastructure, um, you know, so, you know, the, the progress towards autonomous vehicles and everything else also continues to place because all these things are, are part of the digital transformation and, and happening. And even other things like, for example, artificial intelligence, uh, which is, is mostly driven by uh, massive data and massive compute, we continue to get you know, huge data centers, lots and lots of data, new data flowing in from all these places. Uh, even though Moore's law is broadly over, the, there's, we're building lots and lots of computer centers. So the compute is going up. And so you can use that for AI and that can be done for things. All of that is within the kind of just acceleration of stuff that I could have told you in 2019. But, you know, some of it like market conditioning, telehealth, other things are, are decisively uh, much faster, but all of it is in the direction of things you already see by being mobile first, internet first, you know, other kinds of uh, software first as a way of doing this. Now, I think some of the things that I think will be, um, you know, kind of most interesting and new are the fact that um, these new, for example, work patterns or new life patterns or new entertainment patterns 
aren't going to be only while we're doing this work at home. I think actually, in fact, you know, within like I think viruses, we see um, we see vaccines um, in you know with stage three trials. Uh, they're they're already doing manufacture. I think we'll start actually back next year in very selective ways. Uh, Kind of, uh, going back to work in robust, not, you know, back to work, close, back to work, close, you know, like, like, but in a robust way. And I think the same kind of thing where people will be wanting to work together. But I think that we'll see a lot of new kinds of patterns of work where people will say, hey, actually, in fact, I had to, to rethink productivity when I couldn't just use the, hey, I'm going to wait for all of us to get in a room uh, in order to talk about it, like the kind of meeting, meeting cadence. And what are the tools that we can accelerate while we're doing that? Um, you know, and I think, uh, by the way, for recruiting, I think people will see, you know, will have gotten familiar with GEM and then will, will be increased. I think, uh, you know, other kinds of work products like Coda, which is another Greylock investment um, that I'm on the board of, which is like work the way you want in a distributed economic way, you like set up your own workflow, your own, you know, make all your uh, uh, um, documents and apps. I think you'll see a lot of things like that. I think there will be a whole ton of different kinds of, of ways like that, which not only were intensely used during this uh, pandemic time, but we're also now part of the accelerated transformation from here to you know, you know, our lifetimes, our work times. Yeah, that's that. That's a lot of uh, a lot of excitement and a lot of uh, kind of infectious energy coming from you. Thank you for sharing those, and I, I can tell you on on everyone's behalf here uh, at Summit and the Gem family. Uh, you are a deeply inspiring figure, uh, and you're you're such a busy person, and yet you took time uh, to join us. Uh, so I thank you uh, for for that, and hopefully uh, we can see you uh, again uh, next year at the summit. Yes, hopefully. And and look, it's I, I'm so delighted and honored to be part of the Gem Journey. Um, you guys are amazing. Uh, you build great products. Uh, it's an important part of where the where the world's going. So thank you. Thank you so much, Reed. Um, Marissa, with that, uh, back to you for the next exciting session.